Right now, I'm going to show you how to turn a photograph into a cartoon inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So today I've got a great tutorial for you, you guys are going to love this one. It's how to turn a photograph into a comic book style cartoon. And there's only actually a few steps to do this, so we're going to jump right in and do it. So what we're going to do is start with this photograph that I grabbed from Adobe Stock. And I'm going to give you a link underneath where you can go back to the site and you can download this image and also where you can download 10 images of your own from Adobe Stock for free. All right, a couple of things you're looking for in the subjects that you're going to use for to convert them before we do that. Number one, notice we've got a very simple background. You don't want a complicated background because it is going to be a lot of, uh, it's just going to be muddy around there. So you want to have a nice clean background will make this effect better. The second thing we're looking at here is notice how well lit everybody is. Everybody's properly exposed. Maybe she's a little bit bright here. I would have preferred her a little bit darker, but that's okay. But let's create this effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this background just by clicking and dragging it into the new layer icon. Great. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here under Filter, and we're going to go to Other, and then we're going to go down to High Pass. All right, and we're going to apply this, and this is the same filter that we use for High Pass Sharpening. Let me just drag that up there, and you can check out my tutorial on that. So let's just play around here, and what I'm looking for here is this is too far, although it does have a very good cartoony look. But what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to define the detail in here without overdoing it. So let's go back this way just a little bit. Notice we've got a good solid outline there, which is good. And we're just going to click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer by clicking and dragging in there or just hitting Control. Or command J. There's command on Mac, control on Windows, and we're duplicating that layer. Now what we want to do is we want to actually create an inverse of this. So we're going to create control I or command I, and that'll create an inverted version of this. Now we're going to use a blending mode to blend these two layers together. So the mode I want to use is divide. So let's go down here and we're going to choose divide and notice how it's starting to give us that effect already. Now I want to intensify that a little bit. So here's an interesting thing. If I select both of these, by the way, I'm just hitting the shift key and clicking on the bottom layer to select both. And I merge these together, control E, command E on Mac. Notice it also intensifies the colors and softens it off a little bit when I merge those two together. So what we want to do now is we want to kind of boost this a little bit. We want to boost the color in there. We've got a good outline, but we want to make it a little more solid. So we want to go into Levels, and we're just going to hit Control or Command L. You might notice I'm using a lot of keyboard shortcuts, and that's because it's a lot faster than going through the menu. So I'm going to give you these keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to overlay them, and you'll notice in all my tutorials, I use them a lot. Because once you get used to it, you can do this in seconds by using keyboard shortcuts versus dragging around inside of the menus. All right, so what we want to do now is we want to intensify this. See this gap here? That means that there's no pixel information in here. So what we want to do is pull out black slider all the way up until now it's starting to hit in there. And notice now that these dark areas are now becoming more of a solid black. If we push it further in, they're going to become a very, very dark. And you can see we've got an extremely dark outline, but that's maybe a little too much. So let's pull it back a little bit there. And then I'm just going to play around a little in the midtones. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing those midtones a little bit there to just kind of pop this detail. So what we're starting to get now is something that looks like a pencil and ink kind of look right now. So we're going to click OK. Now what we want to do now is add a little bit more of the uh, solid areas, the areas of the texture here. We want to add more of the color. So we're going to take our original background color, Control or Command J, make a copy of it, and then just drag it to the top. You'll see that little blue release, and now we've got that on top. 
So before we merge this in, what we want to do is just kind of soften off some of the detail because we have that already under here. So we're going to go under the filter blur menu. And then under blur, there's a couple of options. You could use smart blur or surface blur. We're going to use surface blur just because it's a little faster. And I'm just going to drag this off to the side and we can kind of see what we're working on here. Let me go to this side and see what it's doing is if I turn that off, notice what it's doing. It's getting rid of some of that detail. So let's turn it back on and I'm going to increase that a little bit more. That's going to be good about there. And notice if you go too far over this threshold, see how it really softens things off. And let's minus out a couple of times so we can kind of see how that's affecting it. That might be a little much. Let's go back just a little bit. Right there, that's good. Now we're gonna click OK. So that's applied it. Now we wanna make these two layers interact with each other using layer blending modes. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on here and I know right now there's two blending modes that are gonna work the best. That's gonna be hard light or linear light. And you can see that as we're just kind of scrolling down hard light and linear light. What's the difference? Well, let me zoom in a little bit and I'm going to show you here. Let's zoom in a little bit on these people and watch what happens. If I go to the hard light, notice how it's giving us a really cool look. And you, one of the things you might have noticed too is, you know, the colors here were kind of bleeding before by doing this. This is evening out the colors as well. So the hard light, if you look at her hat, notice it's a little less saturated when, than when we go to linear light, we get a little bit more saturation. So what we're getting here is kind of a deckled look here, but also notice in the hard light, we get a little more texture in the face versus the linear. See how the linear kind of just blows some of that out. So if you want that kind of texture that it was, you know, looked like it was penciled in, use the hard light, otherwise go to the linear light um, which gives it more saturation as well, as I said. Let's just zoom out. Um, and now you could play around. You could drop the opacity down a little bit if you wanted to just kind of merge these. And then we're going to grab this. And now we're just going to go down to Vibrance. Now under Vibrance, we can increase the vibrancy. See that? And just give the saturation just a little tweak because, you know, we're going for the comic book kind of style. And then you can just tune it by using the blending mode and the opacity to get the exact look that you're going for for the particular style you want. All right, question of the week. Do you guys like cartoons or comic books? Yes or no? And also, if you do, do you prefer Marvel or DC? I'd love to know. Let me know in the links underneath. Okay, so also don't forget to grab your 10 free images from Adobe Stock. The links are underneath. And also, you can be a contributor at Adobe Stock. All you need to do is click underneath and you can sign up. It's super easy. You can get your images in front of millions of people and make a little extra money. So also don't forget, if you like this video, smash that like button into dust. And also if you like these kind of tutorials and you'd like more, hit the subscribe button right now. Get a new tutorial from me every single week and ring that bell so you'll know when I upload. So thanks for watching guys. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.